and talk. That, the beautiful song that PJ wrote, thank you, man, that song is so powerful. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Look at somebody and say, your thank you. Your thank you. This is going to be so quick. Y'all ain't going to even know you got a message. <laughs> there should always be a thank you in your spirit. Not just when you come to church, when you wake up in the morning. Psalms 92 and 1 says, it is a good thing. Look at somebody say good thing. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. God has done so much for you that thank you should come out of you continuously. Amen. You should never let a day go by without thanking God. Psalm 75 says, and one says, unto thee, O God, do we give thanks? Unto thee, do we give thanks? For that thy name is near, thy wondrous works declare. We should do this every single day. Give thanks. There are feelings, though, that come to stop us from being thankful. These conditions keep us from operating with a true heart of thanksgiving toward God and others. Feelings. Feelings. Boy, you know, if we could fix our feelings, we'd be okay. Amen. Amen. That, you know, that's what's in God's way. Our feelings. Amen. Amen. But yeah, so feelings, if we could keep our feelings in check, we'd be all right. When you're angry, it's because of how you feel. Somebody could do something to you and you don't care. Someone else can do the exact same thing and your feelings will tell you that you should care. Did you hear that? Yeah, somebody you don't know can do it and you just, it's gone as soon as they do it. But certain people do it and uh huh. Mm -hmm. That's because there's some feelings behind that. When your lips crunch up like that, mm hmm. Mm hmm. And you just making nasal tones. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You're angry. But somebody else could do it and you wouldn't be angry. Those are feelings, and those feelings are based on what you've already gone through. They don't have nothing to do with what that person did to you. If that be the case, you'd be angry when anybody did it. We're a church, so there's going to be personality clashes and culture clashes and you from Venus and they from Mars and all of that. I get it. Somebody on your role used to be in Islam. They used to be Hebrew, Israelite, whatever. They delivered or whatever, but they got a different, you know, viewpoint on certain things. Yeah. Holiness, Baptist, Methodist. Amen. You church of God in Christ and Pentecostal Apostolic, UPC. You know, you're going to look different at the Baptist person trying to sip some, 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 some gin. They told in the Baptist church it's okay to drink it. But the Bible said don't drink no hard liquor. Look at somebody and say gin is hard liquor. Come on, look at the other person. <laughs> Gin is a sin. That's hard liquor. You can't have that. Oh, well, that's just my cocktail. The Bible said don't drink no hard liquor. Jesus turned water into wine. Gin ain't wine. Gin is gin. Wine is wine. Wine is not hard liquor. They have a separate store to buy the gin in. They can sell the wine at Walmart, I mean at, at uh, uh, Walgreens and CVS. They know there's a difference. Look at somebody, well, my belly don't know. <laughs> you better learn the difference so you can be obedient to the Bible. Amen. Say folks don't drink no hard liquor now. Amen. Why? But if you fill with the spirit, you don't need spirits. It's said 
in the section you shopping in. Spirits. Why are you in the spirit section? Come get that at church. We have a spirit section. I'm preaching to somebody that be getting a little taste from time to time. Just a little taste. Amen. And don't be trying to make gin pie. Pie just floating. Just. <laughs> Amen. Well, the alcohol cooks out of it. You ain't gonna have nothing left. It's mostly alcohol. <laughs> I know Thanksgiving is coming. Amen. I know that's the time when, amen. You go to trying to experiment. What if I put some vodka, vodka in this dressing? I wonder what would happen. <laughs> Searching on the internet, vodka dressing. <laughs> it don't exist. But these are all feelings. And, and hard liquor messes with your feelings. Weed mess with your feelings. Amen. Why is weed? I mean, what? That's the, it's just synonymous with the black community now. I know white fe people smoke it, but they don't smell like it. We all got a, our whole section of town smell like it. You go in the stores in the black neighborhood, just the whole store smell like weed. Weed. Yeah, they want you on weed because weed gonna keep you in your feelings and if you stay in your feelings, you won't make good decisions. That's what weed does. Keep you in your Negro feelings. I can say it because I'm black. <laughs> Amen. You better be glad I said Negro. <laughs> Psalms. Oh, I already read that. But there are feelings that come to stop us from being thankful. And these are the things that the enemy does. He tries to bring forth feelings to mess with your ability to truly thank God. So here's five things real quick. I said it's going to be quick. What time? Is it? It's going to be. No, I ain't going to take my time. I'm not. I'm going to do this quick. <laughs> Five things that hinder your thank you. Five things. The first thing, narcissism. Now, narcissists, like a real narcissist, there's really no hope for that person. I'm sorry. There's no hope because you can't talk to a person that think they, are, they have all the answers. So it just kind of cancels them out. That's why, you know, you just, I mean, no matter what you say, you can't get through because they know more than you or they think you know you just but the spirit of narcissism can sometimes affect us in certain ways where you're not necessarily a narcissist narcissist but you have narcissistic behaviors does that make sense so you don't just have the demon of narcissism but you think you somebody amen and pastor come correct you yeah well you know God been showing me that no he haven't if he'd been showing you, you would have changed. So you mean God would... We get that all the time, don't we? I was just about to talk to you about that. No, you wasn't. Or you would have talked to me about that. Just go on and man, don't be a narcissist. A person with narcissistic personality disorder is never thankful. This is what makes them so messed up. That's how the devil can walk around deceiving and God made him. Now think about that. You can walk around the enemy of the one who made you. That's the ultimate form of narcissism. You really have a problem with the person that is responsible for you being here. You wouldn't be here without him. So the devil is never thankful. And people that are narcissists or have these traits... They aren't thankful. Even when they say thank you, they're not thankful. That's the sad part about a narcissist. A narcissist can act just like they're not one. And be one. 
So even when they say thank you, they don't mean it. Their concern is their own feelings and how others owe them gratitude, apologies, money, care, love, concern, etc. They believe that people owe them something. That's a sad way to be. Do you know nobody owes you anything? Do you know God don't owe you anything? But a narcissist actually believes that people owe them something. They believe that they should be considered even when they aren't considerate. So this narcissistic spirit can get on you and it'll start hindering your ability to say thank you especially to God because you'll begin to expect God to do it as if he should yeah this is the spirit of Satan himself and a very hard disposition to be delivered from it's impossible for you to truly thank God when you feel he owes you yeah you feel he owes you. Look at somebody and say, God, I don't owe you anything. But you owe him a thank you. Amen. Amen. You know, your mother and your father, and I've already done the message, honor them and all of that. But do you, you know how much you owe your parents? Do you really know? If your parents had walked around with a ledger and took some notes, you know you can't talk to them any kind of way. You know you should honor and reverence them and respect them and not let nobody turn you against your parents. That's who you owe. And they don't owe you anything. I'm not talking to him unless he apologizes. Amen. Philippians 2 and 3. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but low in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. That's the opposite of narcissism. To be able to look at someone else as better than yourself. He didn't say equal to yourself. Esteem them better. More important. I think I'm preaching in here, but it's quiet. Amen. But this is a real spirit. You got to pray this spirit off, especially if you grew up under one. If you grew up under a self-serving person that was very selfish, only thinking about themselves and how they felt and all, always worried about what other people might say and all that. We don't want them to think this and we don't want them to think that. If you grew up under that, then that's going to turn you into one. So you got to pray against this spirit. Amen. And stop worrying about what folks think. Stop it. Now, who don't say that because then they going to think we what? Me briefing your children before you go somewhere. Okay, now don't, if they say this, now don't talk about this because then they going to think we. Boy, that's narcissism. You really think people thinking about you. Discontentment is the enemy of a thank you. When you focus on what you do not have and constantly wish for those things, you forget what God has done for you. Come on, y'all. You focus on what you don't have and what you wishing for. First of all, tear the dream board down. What is it? Get a vision board. That's the devil. Oprah, them new age, they created that. Oh, I just, somebody's looking at me funny. Wait a minute, these are the things that I, tear it down. If God didn't tell you to put it on there, don't put it on there. How you putting stuff on there and then praying for it? You're supposed to pray first. Ask God, is that what he wants you to do? And you know what he gonna say? Wait. I say on the Lord. I mean, he probably not going to sing that. We're going to tell you to wait. They that wait up on the Lord 
shall renew their strength. Mount up with wings. You got to wait on God. Well, I put the picture up there so I can watch it while I wait. No, you don't know if that's what God has for you. Amen. Back when I was 18, 19, just think if I had made a vision board. Because you know what would have been on it? Music, production. Had my production, this going to be my studio. This going to be, and that would have been on my vision board. And God had a whole different plan for me. <laughs> then he gave me the production and all of that. But it was after I did what he told me to do. But if I'd been watching that, I'd have thought anything else was to take me away from the vision. See, that's what a vision board does. It locks you into what you said. Take the picture of them cars off your refrigerator. Instagram, you posing against cars you know ain't yours and will never be yours. Let God bless you. Can I tell the truth in here? Every Cadillac you see, you done took a picture next to it. One of these days. Let God do that. Amen. When you focus on what you do not have and constantly wish for the things you forget, you forget what God has done for you. A person that struggles with contentment will miss God's blessings altogether. They can't truly be thankful because they haven't received what they really wanted. So you in church, people lifting their hands or whatever, you can't get really get involved because you haven't gotten what you wanted yet. I see you. Yeah. You waiting on something else or your husband can't really get it and you mad because somebody, oh no. You can't be truly thankful. Go forth in a thanksgiving to God because other folks, you can't do it because you don't have what you want. And what God does with people like that, he just let them get afflicted. If a, an affliction come over you, you're going to thank him. Other things won't be as important. I know I'm preaching in here. Imagine giving someone a gift that is not what they really wanted you to give them. Discontent people treat God this way. God gave you the gift of life. The gift of his son. But that ain't good enough to thank him? Because you didn't get the car you wanted? The raise you wanted? Discontent people treat God this way. After all he has done, they are still not happy. Hebrews 13 and 5, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with the things as ye have. For he had said, I'd never leave thee, don't forsake thee. Look at somebody and say, be content. be content. You can be thankful for what he's done so far and God will continue to do things for you. But if you stop being thankful... Because of what you didn't get, the canker worm is coming. And he eats everything. Can I keep preaching in here? Pride. You can't tell him nothing. A person that is prideful is always worried about what people are thinking or saying about them. So these people neglect to thank God for what he has done because thankfulness is an act of submission. A prideful person can't submit. So when a person's too prideful, they can't lift their hands and give God praise because that's an act of submission, which is the opposite of pride. Amen. Amen. And y'all better, you know, we, you know, thank God.
God for what you got and who you are and all that, but don't ever be prideful. Amen. Amen. Don't think you did it. We can't be prideful for what God did. So pride has to come because you think you did it. And quit telling us how you did it. I don't want to hear that. Every time I see you, you talking about what you got, what you're going to get, where you're going, where you're going, and yeah, that cannot just, no, that's pride. So I know you're not thanking God because you just spent 10 minutes telling me what you've done. Right. 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 Amen. Amen. That's why it's so hard for entertainers and af- professional athletes and different ones to, to, to live a save life. Because there's an element of pride that comes in a lot of them that they want to talk about what they've done and their accomplishments and what they're capable of. Their whole life they are being graded their existence is graded. Yeah. So if you can run faster, jump higher, an element of pride may slip in there. Not always. I got a lot of friends that are professional athletes. I know, you know, some of them, you know, but it's still a struggle even for them. Folk want your autograph and different things for throwing a ball, dribbling a ball. Now you better than regular people. So that's something you got to constantly battle. That's pride. Then it gets hard for them to lift their hands and thank God and give God praise. Amen. We don't, it don't have to be no professor athlete. You just do her better than everybody in the city. I can do the best baby hair combs and swirls. My baby hair swirls are the best. Nobody can do it. I can do them with my eyes closed. I, I, can, I lick the brush. I, I don't even use no chemicals. I lick the brush. And I will just, I draw some baby hair on there. You don't need no hair. I draw it. I draw it. I draw it. Can't nobody, nobody do it like me. That's pride. Thank God for your ability to draw that baby hair. Thank God. Give that to God. (laughs) But even though God is great, their pride makes them hesitant to be truly grateful and show their gratitude because to do that, it requires humility. This walk of Christ that we're living on, I mean that we're living in, It requires humility. Amen. It requires humility. It requires humility to the point of taking wrong when you're in the right. Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah, yeah. Somebody did you wrong. And they come to you. You can't go off. You can't talk nasty. You can't roll your neck and your backbone slip. You can't do none of that ghetto ratchet stuff. You got to receive their apology. And if they say you hurt them, you got to, well, I apologize, sister. I'm sorry about that. But because we're here in a fellowship, I got to take wrong on this. I can't walk around in opposition to my brothers and sisters. I can't. Now, if I got to do it, all y'all got to do it. And I have to do it all the time. Some folk I want to lock out of this church. They come to the door. Hey, 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 it's 30. Hey, you can't come. But I can't do that. I got to love them. And if they say, Pastor, when you looked at me and batted your eyes, I know you was trying to tell me that you don't like me. And I got to hear that. Oh, that's a true story. I got to hear that, and you know what I got to say? You just... I want to say But you know what I have to say? I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I did that. I did not mean it that way. You know we good. You know we good. Okay. And that's all they wanted. That's all they wanted. Maybe they had a rough week. They just wanted somebody to just care. And I'll give you that. 
I'll give you that. Some of y'all, I know you've been talking about me. But that don't, I, I, hey, I, hey, I've been talking about you. We can make this work. But, but that's humility. That's being able to decrease. Not worrying about, you know, that, that conversation, me humbling myself, don't make me less of a person. And if I want to stay in good with God where I can lift my hands and thank him in confidence, then I have to make sure behind the scenes I'm humbling myself and operating in humility and esteeming others important. Proverbs 16 and 5. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. You know why a prideful person is going to be punished just because you remind God of what Lucifer did. And is still doing. Number four, I'm almost done. Sinfulness. When you are practicing sin or living sinfully, you are not truly thankful to God because you practice self-certitude instead of self-denial. Amen. Amen. It's hard to come in here and give God the praise when you know last night you weren't thinking about the Lord. Amen. You had them scissors in that club. You was cutting. Somebody really did cut the rug. What's that? Just cutting the rug last night. You can't lift your hands in here. Hand all stamped up. Oh, make sure the sleeve. Make sure the sleeve don't go down. Yeah, but that sin, practicing sin will definitely get in your way, get in the way of your thankful, your, your, your thank you. When you constantly please your flesh, you will struggle to be thankful to God. I know I'm preaching. In other words, if you haven't been set free, then you are bound and the enemy can constantly rob you of your praise and thanksgiving. 1 John 5 and 18, we know that everyone who has been born of God does not keep on sinning. But he who was born of God protects him, and the evil one does not touch him. And the last one, envy. This gets in the way of your thank you. When you are envious or covetous toward the blessings of others, you forget to be thankful. How are you going to be thankful and you looking at what somebody else has? If you're looking at somebody else's stuff, you can always find somebody that's got more than you. You can't be thankful for what you have if you're looking at somebody who has more than you. You're going to want what they want. I mean, what they have. Amen. That's not what this church is for. Amen. We don't compare cars in this church. And clothes and jobs and rings and necklaces and Amen. It's just not even that kind of church. I don't know what most of y'all drive anyway. I don't want to know. If you happy, I'm happy. Amen. And quit caring what I'm driving. Amen. You don't know how I got it. I was talking, I think I was talking to Bria another day. I was telling him how I got that Jeep. I got that Jeep free. Yeah, but somebody gonna see it. Ooh. Pastor, you know he be spending the money. You don't know what I'm doing. You don't know how smart I am with my finance. You don't know nothing about me. Amen. People just, boy, they think they know and go to talking. That's why God hates it. He said that's one of the things he hates. People that's jawing in other folks' business. Amen. Look at somebody say, you don't know nobody's business but yours. Ha. 
I know. Now this I know. Now I know he did. You don't know. But that's how folks are, man. But you can't be looking at what other folks have because you don't know how they got it. And my mama used to always say that. You don't know how them people got that. Amen. They got a new car. Oh, see, that's God speaking. It's time for us to have a new one. We can't keep parking this bucket next to theirs. It's time to get a new one. You go get a car just because somebody else got one? You know what's going to happen in 18 months. Y'all know that sound? It's like no other sound on the street. You know what that is. Somebody coming to get something. I don't even know how they drive that, that truck. It's about five gear shifts on it. And they use all of them. They want to make the most noise possible. Every, every time they hit it, your heart just, oh, God, they coming. He driving around the neighborhood a couple of times. Just in case somebody else is behind. Don't you be buying no car because somebody else got one. Amen. Amen. And you know this is 2023. They don't even call that truck no more. They just hit a button. <laughs> Wherever you are. <laughs> and you know what it is. You don't ever be like, oh man, the car. No, you know. <laughs> <laughs> somebody ride with you. Hey man, do I need to boost? You need a boost? boost? Nah. We're just going to leave it right here, man. Let's, we're just going to walk the rest of the way. Cause... <laughs> but that's what happened when you get out there trying to compete with people. Amen. You don't know other people's journey. You don't know what God is doing, working in them. You can't compete with humans. We are supposed to rejoice when others are blessed. Amen. Be happy for your brothers and sisters. We're supposed to, be, we're supposed to rejoice when others are blessed and then thank God for what he has done for us. So you be happy about what they have and then you thank God for what he's done for you. Amen. <laughs> when you are envious of others you forfeit God's blessings for you so what you would have gotten from God you can't get because your eyes are on somebody else amen oh I'm believing by faith I'm going to walk around the dealership seven times I'm going to walk around it. none of that stuff works walk to work seven times and then keep walking Keep going, keep going. Go seven, then 70, then 70 times seven. Then you have some money, you can go buy something. Look at somebody say, stuff costs money, not prayers. Say it costs money, not prayers. Say that, say it. Somebody just, oh, no, no, I'm, I'm going to believe. No, it costs money, not prayers. If you don't have the money, you can't buy it. You can't write a scripture and put it in the gas tank. You're going to mess that car up. I'm just preaching against this covetous spirit. Make sure it don't ever nest in ABC. We got folks in here from all walks of life. Amen. Some folks, and you know what? When me and my wife was barely making it, we didn't know he was barely making it. Because we were content. We were happy. So we didn't know he was barely making it. We was on the county assistance and still having parties. <laughs> Mimi was over there eating shrimp. <laughs> Tell him, Mimi. <laughs> That's when the Lord said, get off of it. <laughs> you, you, you misusing me. <laughs> Can't have a crab ball <laughs> with the Lone Star card. Just, amen. God said, That's enough. <laughs> All right. <laughs> 
I parked right there for a little bit because I needed it. But then when you don't need it, you stop. Amen. Amen. That's for somebody. Amen. WIC, they still had a WIC program? We was on that WIC program, man, and learned how to work it and make it work for us. Amen. Boy, see, folk don't know. You see the glory, but oh. <laughs> Elder Willie taught me how to make grits with them grits you get on WIC. And them the, and the best grits, the, the best grits. Now you gotta cook them half a day. <laughs> it's, it's like sand on the beach. <laughs> and they come in a brown bag that just say grit with a T. Yeah, ain't no S. Grit, grit. But he told me, he said, man, you put those in some water, about 45 minutes, put that lid on them. He said, when you come back, they're going to be creamy. And I've been making them good ever since. But that's what we had to do because that's when, back then, that's what I was on. He knew me back then. Am I telling the truth? He knew me back then. That's what we had. Was trying to take care of Vicky. Vicky, you know, came unexpectedly. Was trying to take care of her. Then Landon came and, man, we just had to do what we had to do. Get through those times. Amen. Now, Jonathan, he don't know none of what I'm talking about. Amen. He, <laughs> he's been blessed all his life. <laughs> he's like, hey, I, you, my box says grits, and it has a picture of a black man on it. I don't know what y'all talking about. That's <laughs> I have the real Captain Crunch. I don't know who King Vitamin is. I don't know who King Vitamin is. I, I see you the captain. Y'all remember King Vitamin? These folk too young. I need to preach this at an old folk church. King Vitamin. And it didn't come in no box. It was a bag, Jack. It was a bag and then they gave you the little tie to tie it up. You're stuck on the side. It was Captain Crunch. It just wasn't, they forgot the sugar. If you put your own sugar on it, it's Captain Crunch. And in our house, it better be Captain. When I was growing up, because you ain't getting the real Captain. Amen. King Vitamin, man. They still sell it. Well, all I know is they wouldn't let you get the real Captain with the, with the wick. <laughs> It do tear the roof of your mouth up, but see what you have to do. You got to put the milk in there and then go do something else. Tell them, you got to put the milk in it, go do something else, then come back. When you come back, it's the right consistency. Tell them, David, the right consistency. <laughs> How did this message turn into that? Let me finish. <laughs> when you are envious of others, you forfeit God's blessings though. Luke 12 and 15, and he said unto them, take heed and beware of covetousness for a man's life consisted not in the abundance of the things which he possessed. <laughs> Summary. We must get delivered from the things that hinder our thanksgiving to God. We should give thanks to God daily and have a thank you spirit in all that we do. Even when others bless us, we should be thankful and what? Say it. Say it. Don't just assume people know you thankful. Say it. Our attitude should be of thanksgiving and not entitlement or covetousness. He has kept all of his promises, even when you didn't keep yours. He has made a way when there was no way. He kept you alive when you deserved to die. He forgave you when you didn't deserve another chance. There is so much to thank him for. When we break free from narcissism, discontentment, insecurity, sinfulness, and envy, we can be what? Free to tell the Lord thank you. For all that he has done for us each and every day. 
of our lives. Colossians 3 and 15 says, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which also ye are called. In what? Let peace rule in your hearts. We're called in one body. We're going to be, we're going to be at peace in here. Amen. Amen. And we're going to let peace rule in our hearts as we are called in one body. And then we're going to be what? We're going to be thankful. Man, we got a new building coming over here. They started on electricity. Hopefully we'll have it by the, the Charlie Brown Christmas time. Man, we got to be thankful. Amen. And let me say this before I say these last two scriptures. Thank y'all for being a church where I don't have to talk about money when I come up here. Your maturity level in that area, it boggles the minds of visiting preachers that come to visit. They tell me, you're not going to get up and take an offering and do you want me to take one and all that? I say, brother, no. We're not inviting you if we can't invite you. When artists come, whatever, if we can't bring you, we can't bring you. You'll know when we have it. Your phone will ring. But we don't have to get up here and have when we were doing this building over here, have I asked y'all for anything extra? No, and people been giving extra. We've been getting some big old chunks. Man, that week I mentioned, I need to mention it again, about us needing a, 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 a football player. What did I say? We need a professional athlete. One must have been in here because they gave us a big old chunk of what we needed for over there. And that's what I'm saying. You don't know who's in there, so you trust God. You just trust God, and we're going to trust God. Amen. So thank, I want to thank y'all because that's an area that if we struggled in that area, I'd quit. Because I ain't going to get up here and get no heart attack trying to pay for stuff. Amen. I don't have no prescription bottles. I don't plan on having none. Amen. Once pastor requires me to have a prescription, I quit. I'm just putting you on notice. So don't get on my nerves. Don't raise my pressure. If I got to take, I, amen. But thank y'all, y'all for being that kind of church. That means that y'all really believe that the word y'all are getting is beneficial. Amen. If you're benefiting from it, the church is going to benefit from you being here. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which also ye are called in one body and be ye thankful. And let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, how? Giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Amen? Everyone stand to your feet. A thank you is always in order when it comes to God. We owe him that. But these hindrances, man, devil will put a spirit on you to mess up your ability, put a spirit around you, put a situation or an issue in your life to block you from being able to give God thanks. And I want to break that off, whatever it is, so that you can thank God every day of your life. Give him the thanks he deserves. Just come on up. If you know it, You've been struggling in that area or something's been going on in that area and you won't, hey, Lord, I need to be free. Especially when I come to church, man, I don't need to be thinking about no rucus in the church. No foolishness and stuff, man. I need, no, when I come here, I need to give God thanks. I don't need to be weird in the church. This is the place where I can just thank God for all that he's done. Then I got to remember all he's done. Bring it to my remembrance. The reason I decided to come here. You know you can forget the reason you came here. Cares of this life, issues, bad, all the stuff made you forget the reason you even came here. You came here because you knew the word was true and you wanted to be in fellowship with believers. Like-minded believers. Amen. And the devil will have you bickering with like-minded believers. Not getting along with folks and having issue with people to keep you from thanking God. 
and to make you forget the very reason this was your favorite place to be. So we're going to break that right now. Break that, break that. And believe God so that we can say thank you. We can say thank you. We can say thank you. I don't want to think about that no more. I don't want to think about it no more. I don't want it to be just gone. I want to reset. Let's just start all over again. I don't want to think about that no more. That's how you need to be. I want to thank God. I want to thank God. I want to thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Come on and sing that again. Thank you, Lord. Thank our hands lifted up. Father God, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for being so good, for being merciful, for loving us, for being God. We thank you, Lord. And God, we come before you with our hands lifted up as a form of surrender. Just surrendering ill feelings, ill emotions, problems, circumstances, situations, issues trauma, hurt, arguments, bickering, whatever it is, Father God, that's blocking our thank you, we release it right now. We release it right now and we consider it settled and over. Remove it right now from us, Father. Any spirits, Father, that attach themselves to us, spirits of narcissism, of envy, of jealousy. Father God, any spirits that attached it, itself to us, insecurities and covetousness, all of these things that may have attached themselves to us because of how we were feeling. God, we release that right now. We release that right now and we break that spirit off by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. And Father God, we just surrender to you and give, we're giving you our thank you, meaning it from the depths of our being. Thank you, Lord, for putting up with us, for tolerating our foolishness, for Father God, not throwing us away when we deserve to be thrown away. Father God, for not taking us literally for certain things that we even said. God, forgive us. And we thank you, Lord, because you are constant. You are consistent. You will always be there. And you will never leave us nor forsake us. So we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's sing it some more. Thank you. Come on, just sing it to him. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you.
let's just tell them you've been so good. Let's just sing that. You've been so good. Hallelujah. 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 On your way to your seats, just hug somebody and say, don't forget to thank him. He's been too good. Don't forget to thank him. Amen. Don't make it all about turkey and dressing and giblet gravy and cranberry and